Have you ever wondered how drivers are able to negotiate steering, braking, and numerous other tasks all at once? Or how your parents can simultaneously make you dinner and lecture you about your life choices? The answer is automaticity. Being able to carry out tasks automatically enables us to reserve cognitive resources for other tasks that we need to perform simultaneously without hindering our performance on either task. We actually acquire automaticity in many aspects of our lives, including driving, walking, and typing. And it looks like we're about to see why automaticity is also important for running. We're about to watch a race between Oscar, an experienced runner, and Aisha, who has never sprinted in her life and had to buy runners just for this race. Let's see how this one pans out. Well, Aisha, competitive running involves managing a lot of different components at once that you need to perform automatically. Fitz and Posner suggest that automaticity is acquired over three stages. Right now, you're in the cognitive stage. During this stage, you're only just developing the declarative knowledge that you need to be able to perform each element of running. This includes breath regulation, balance, and foot placement. Unfortunately, rehearsing all these skills at once increases your cognitive load, which can lead to slow performance and a lot of errors. Running isn't much fun, especially since it labours breathing, and when you got puffed and started focusing on regulating your breathing, you stopped attending to your balance, which is when you tripped and stumbled. And I'd really like to not fall over my own feet. Perfect! With some rehearsal, you'll start to build connections between the elements of running. This is called the associative stage. During this stage, you'll convert declarative knowledge you have about running into procedural knowledge. This process is called proceduralization, and it helps you perform tasks with less effort and solve problems, like how to sprint without injuring yourself, or seeing your life flash before your eyes. You'll be able to breathe, balance, and run as if it's natural, even though we know that it very much isn't. So I'll be able to run more. <laughs> Not quite. Keep on practicing and you'll upgrade to the autonomous stage like Oscar. This stage is the promised land you've been searching for. You'll be able to run faster with fewer errors and without having to waste attentional resources on the mechanics of running. More than that, in 2001, Rowan McKenna found that because expert tennis players could automatically anticipate the direction of tennis shots, they could divide their attention between a tennis anticipation task and an unrelated verbal task without their performance on either being affected. This suggests that people who have automated a task can simultaneously perform an entirely different task. Like speaking on the phone. Practicing social distancing via Zoom. Or learning about automaticity. But no one does those things. Of course not. But freeing up space to focus on other considerations can also help runners. For example, let's return to your race earlier and pause here. At this point, Oscar was thinking... Okay, I'm making good time here. My pace is good. Meanwhile, you were thinking... Breathe. Ugh, why does everything hurt? Based on the research of Morgan and Pollack, it seems that since Oscar has automated the skill of running, he was able to monitor higher order factors like his physiological state and pace. On the other hand, you focused on the core elements of running to stop yourself from feeling like you were going to die. There's no alternative. I know, right? Running will never be enjoyable, but if you acquire automaticity, you'll be able to minimise errors when you run and focus on the things that can help you become a better runner. In fact, it'll help with a number of tasks you undertake in your everyday life, like speaking and typing. And you might be able to beat Oscar. 